All right, man. Got the background music rolling. Hold on, hold on, real quick. Let me get the spirit of that. All right. So here we go, man. Let me talk to y'all right quick. Hold on. Hold on, gentlemen. Let me get everything set up the way I want it to be set up. There we go. See the QR codes, Cash App, PayPal. Go ahead and put your phone up to that. Take a snapshot. If you're not donating a like, feel free to donate to the Cash App or the PayPal. Or well, shit. Donate the boat. Or you can just listen. Donate the fucking ear for a moment. And while you're at it, donate your brain. Because I need y'all to listen. Let me plug the joint. He said women scientifically get dick whipped. Stop the cap. Stop the motherfucking cap. Right? So shout out to the homie Lucario. He posted a video on Facebook. So I'm going to react to that video in just a moment. <laughs> Look, let me tell y'all something. For those of you who don't know my journey into this YouTube space, okay, let me let me break it down real quick, real quick. So when I very first came to YouTube, I was just watching music videos. That's all I was doing. I was watching music videos. And sometimes when you have an auto playlist, things just pop up. So I started listening to certain things that came my way. Um, shout out to the angry man, right? When he first started, he was doing videos out of his car, right? Now he got a big ass setup. He got a couple hundred thousand, maybe a few hundred thousand followers. But he started off, you know, doing joints out of a car, right? O'Shea was was uh, getting his beak wet as well. I mean, he had more of a following than I do now, but he was getting his beak wet as well. So through watching O'Shea's joints, you know, I came across the Lucarios of the world, the Ron Wills, the Steve the Deans, the Alan Roger Currys, and so forth and so on. And also, a lot of you don't know this, um, I think the guys on the Real Game No Theory podcast probably don't even know this. But um, when when O'Shea was, when he was doing the, the Negro Manosphere website, I wrote a couple of articles. I pinned a couple of articles, you know what I'm saying, in the, uh, the Negro Manosphere website. A lot of you motherfuckers, did. matter of fact, all y'all probably didn't know that shit, right? So, and before O'Shea got to where he's at now with his subscribers and all that other shit, you know, I did go on his channel one time, you know what I'm saying? Well, a couple of times, but one time in particular where he basically did like an interview type of thing, you know, years ago, right? But when I very first started doing videos and shit, what I used to do, I used to, because I started out watching, again, Lucario's videos, Ron Will's videos, Alan Roger Curry's, and, you know, game recognized game. So I always appreciated what those brothers had to say. And there were a couple of other individuals, you know what I'm saying? So for anyone I didn't name, there is no particular reason. It's just, there's too many names, right? So what I used to do at first, I, I used to watch the videos and I was entertained by a lot of the comments. I was entertained by the, uh, the live chat and all the goofiness I would see. So I started out just being a commenter, just commenting under videos. And just going in on all the stupid shit I would see in the comments. So when I started doing videos, I would basically react to comments. You know what I'm saying? That's how I started out. You know what I'm saying? And I used to always refer to myself as just a guy who's talking shit on the internet. And I used to always say that I'm just a dude who talks shit on the internet, right? Because people wanted to label me as a dating coach. And I'm like, nah, I'm just a dude who talks shit on the internet, right? So that that's really my my background and how I really started was was that and then through that, you know, 
um, O'Shea Duke Jackson, Lucario, EO, Everett Overton, those were the three individuals that really pushed me to start my own channel, um, specifically EO, because I remember he would tell me, like when he had live streams or whatever, and I would come in just to support the brother, he would say, every time you come into my live stream, I'm, I'm going to get at you about starting your own shit, right? So eventually I started the shit. So shout out to EO, O'Shea, and Lucario. Those were the three main individuals that, that kind of pushed me to even start this shit, right? So here I am, right? Here I am. And I'm going to go back to my motherfucking roots, which is pointing out bullshit, right? Let me plug the joint. He said women scientifically get dick whipped. Stop the cap. Now, I want to point your attention to something. Well, before I do that, before I point your attention to what I want to point it to, let me do this. For those of you who don't know, I do have a channel membership. And this week, hold on real quick. I want to make sure I got my shit right. There we go. This week, so before this, before the weekend is up, between today, right now it's Thursday, 5.22 p.m. Central Standard Time. So between today and Sunday, I'm dropping a joint. Um, right now, there's going to be channel members only, but I might include my Patreon folks simply because I was asked by one of my Patreon individuals, say, hey, man, we're going to get this shit too. So I got to figure out a way to, to make sure that they, they both get it. And this is what y'all have to understand real quick, just in case y'all don't understand how YouTube works. When you drop a video, right? When you drop a video, you can set it to private, unlisted, or public. Those are the three main things, unlisted, private, and public, right? Now, when you have uh, members, right, on your channel, a membership on your channel, then you can also do videos to members only, right? So in order for Patreon people to get it, I have to set the joint to unlisted, right? So anytime it's unlisted, all I got to do is send the link to anybody and you can watch it. Although people publicly might not be able to watch it. If you have access to that link, you can watch it. So I have to figure out a way where both the members and Patreon get it. You know what I'm saying? So I, I got to kind of figure out how I'm going to do that. But I'm, what I'm going to do is review every single law, all 48 laws of power, right? 48 laws of power game series. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down um right based on how i interpret it with the way that i think and my and my own words of course i'm going to use the brief definition that they use in the 40 laws of power or that robert green uses right so that way you understand which law i'm going to delve into and just break down in my own word right so that's that's coming this week and then what i'm probably going to do is um, i don't know if it's going to be monthly or if it's going to be weekly where I'm going to release a new one. I don't know the frequency that I'm going to do it, but I'm definitely going to release a new one periodically until we cover all 48 laws, right? So that's coming. So let me go ahead and take that joint off. Give me a second, man. All right. So let me plug the joint again. He said women scientifically get dick whipped. Stop the cap. Now, this is what I want to say real quick about dating advice and just any commentary that you hear on social media, just in general, but specifically in this space of YouTube, there's a lot of conjecture. There's a lot of uh, pseudoscience. Okay. You might be asking, what the fuck is pseudoscience? I'm glad you asked. So I'm going to give you the brief definition right now. And then I'm going to give you the broader definition as we get into the video. So pseudoscience is a collection of beliefs or practices mistakenly regarded as being based on scientific method. And for those of you who don't know, when you hear the term pair bonding, pair bonding is also pseudoscience. Okay. It's pseudoscience. Again, what is pseudoscience? a collection of beliefs or practices mistakenly regarded as being based on scientific method, right? So we're going to get into, into that. And if you don't know what parabond is, I'm glad you asked. 
In biology, a pair bond is the strong affinity that develops in some species between a mating pair, often leading to the production and rearing of offspring and potentially a lifelong bond. Pair bonding is a term coined in the 1940s that is frequently used in sociobiology and evolutionary biology circles. The term often implies either a lifelong socially monogamous relationship or a stage of mating interaction in socially monogamous species. It is sometimes used in reference to human relationships. And, and that's where everything gets, gets fucked up. It gets conflated, it gets twisted up. And if you don't understand what social, bi uh, social monogamy is, I'm glad you asked. I got that for you too. Social monogamy refers to two partners living together, having sex with each other, and cooperating in acquiring basic resources, worse, which I mean, sorry, resources such as shelter, food, and money. Right? It has nothing to do with sexual exclusivity. Sexual monogamy covers that. Social monogamy has nothing to do with sexual exclusivity at all. Right? See, you got to break all this shit down. And let, and let me just kind of briefly um, touch on why I'm even talking about pair bonding and social monogamy. When I came to YouTube, right, when I, when I very first started watching videos, probably circa 2017, right, right around 2017, maybe 2016, I didn't start doing videos until late 2018, early 2019. But 2016, 2017-ish, right, you know, I would watch videos here and there. And I heard the term pair bond way back then. And when I heard it, the way that the guy used it, number one, I never heard of the term pair bond or pair bonding. But the way that he used it, it didn't make sense to me. Because the way that he used it is kind of the definition that most people, idiotic individuals on YouTube have adopted, which they try to, they try to correlate pair bonding and a woman's sexual past, which none of those things have anything to do with each other. So when I heard it, because I'm actually a, an intelligent individual and I know how to think for myself, I said, I never heard of that term. And the way that he's using it is very suspicious to me. Let me go research it. Let me go look it up. And when I looked it up, and I found the real definition, I said, that dude is using it wrong. <laughs> He's misquoting the true definition of what parabond is. And of course, throughout all of these years, the same way he misquoted or the same way that he twisted the definition and changed the definition is the, the popularized uh, way that people think of parabonding now, which all of them got it wrong. And, and the reason why you never hear anyone challenge it it's because all these motherfuckers are stupid, right? No, a lot of these dudes, they'll say, oh, do your research. And then when I bring up the real definition, them dudes will act like the definition I brought up is bullshit. And I'm like, because you never did no research. Because if you would have looked it up like I looked it up, you would have saw what I saw, and you would have immediately dismissed it as them dudes don't know what they're talking about. So let's go ahead and just get into this, man. I didn't talk enough about a bunch of other shit. So, <laughs> the guy that you're about to hear talk, he's perpetuating propaganda. And he's also spewing pseudoscience, right? He, he's inter, he's, he basically intertwined propaganda, which we're going to talk about in just a second. And also, he took pseudoscience and he mixed it together and the way that he's preventing it if you ain't got no brain you know you you might think he's making sense okay but we're about to get into that let's go man if you ejaculate in a woman bro your sperm go to her brain and stay there for the rest of her life good God, that good is. i like the bible that. a woman was only supposed to be with one man her whole entire life because they knew that concept or she was supposed to remain a virgin until she got wedded and good your brain, sperm when you ejaculate you. in a woman you have something that literally suppresses her immune system. 
And then she has something called spermicide that's naturally produced by her vagina to kill all the hundred trillions of sperms for one can make it and the baby can be conceived. What this does when you ejaculate her and you weaken her immune system is something called the blood and brain barrier. Your sperm literally passes it and attaches to receptors on her brain. That's why they be so addicted to males. Literally, women scientifically get dick whipped though. Scientifically. Because your sperm literally bonds with her brain forever. And that's why multiple sex partners and women, they start developing multiple different personalities. You ain't ever seen your woman start talking like you? Sometimes I even start looking alike. Merge and I always and shit. felt like married people, when they start looking alike, you found your match. No, nah, yeah, so that's the net. You just bust brain? that many nuts in her. <laughs> My sister look just like her hood, but I can't wait to call her and but that nigga net in your brain. <laughs> they gotta take a long route to get there, but yeah. But that's why that's why you see multiple women that have multiple sex partners. They take on multiple personalities from their partner. Mm. That's how you know she's been fucked. Mm-hmm. If you just <laughs> yo man, <clears throat> if you believe that dumbass shit then you just a dummy. But what he's saying, guys that think that monogamy is natural for women, guys that think that something is wrong with promiscuous women, what he's saying, they they could probably see some of their false beliefs in what he's saying. And what he's doing, he's perpetuating propaganda. If you don't know what propaganda is, I got you. Hold on real quick before we do that. Yeah, I got you. Okay, hold on. Let's let's get to that. So what what is propaganda? Propaganda is the deliberate spread of information to influence public opinion. It can include facts, arguments, rumors, half truths. Now, let, let, let me say this. He did tell some half truths, right? When he was talking about the immune system and the the blood to brain barrier, he did tell some half truths, but a lot of those half truths were followed up by blatant lies, right? And I'm gonna break all of that shit down, right? It can also be used to manipulate other people's beliefs. Now, propaganda, unlike casual conversation or the free exchange of ideas, because it's deliberate and manipulative, right? It can involve any medium that evokes an emotional reaction to one's thoughts or views. Now, let me speak on that. YouTube is a cesspool for the unimaginative, the intellectually challenged, and just the downright illiterate dumb motherfuckers. And what I mean by that is, is if you're smart enough to identify people that lack intelligence, if you're smart enough to identify people that have strong beliefs in something. Although the preponderance of evidence against that belief exists, but yet they still believe the bullshit, which is confirmation bias, okay? I'm gonna get into that in just a moment. So even when people are presented with evidence that shatters their illusions or their beliefs, they still refuse to believe that evidence, right? When you identify a group of people that think like that, you can easily say things with passion, with zeal, with conviction, and you can articulate yourself in such a way that those people will believe what you're saying, like these idiots. And and what's sad to me is that they Negroes, right? So we out here looking stupid. These niggas are dumb. Every lad, he's stupid as fuck. And everyone listening to him, buying what he's saying, all these motherfuckers are dumb. Okay, they're not bright, right? And unfortunately, a lot of people in this YouTube space, not only YouTubers, but people who consume the content, they're not very bright. They're not very bright, not at all, right? So if you don't know what confirmation bias is, I'm glad you asked. I'm gonna help you with that too. We're gonna break all this shit down today, right? Confirmation bias, the tendency to interpret new evidence as confirmation of one's existing beliefs or theories. So this guys who believe in parabonding, Guys who believe that women are only supposed to be with one guy, if they hear this and they actually believe what that guy is saying, this is an example of confirmation bias. Okay, what I'm saying is the opposite of that, right? I guarantee you there are guys listening right now that are no longer listening because I'm already crushing their fucking illusion, right? So let's get back into this, man. Let's get back into this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me throw up the joint. 
like, where am I going with it? All right, right there. Let's throw that right there. Let's take this off. All right, so we're going to go back. And we're going to break all this shit the fuck down. He said women scientifically get dick whipped. Stop the cat, bro. Stop the cat. All right, let's go. Right, hold on real quick. Let me get over here with it. Uh, no, 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 no. That's not where I want to go. Right there. Okay, here we go. Jack laid in a woman, bro. Your sperm go to her brain and stay there for the rest of her life. Good. Okay. He says when you ejaculate in a woman, <laughs> the sperm go to her brain and stay there for the rest of her life. So let's get that out the way. Is that what I'm looking for? No, no, no. That's not what I'm looking for. Right here. How long do sperm live after ejaculation? The lifespan of sperm after ejaculation depends on the circumstances. Ejaculated sperm remain viable for several days within a female reproductive tract. It don't say nothing about her fucking brain. Fertilization is possible as long as the sperm remain alive up to five days. He said the sperm goes to a woman's brain and stay there for the rest of her life. That has been determined to be a lie. He's lying, right? Sperm can also be preserved for decades when semen is frozen. So the only way for sperm to survive past five days is it has to be frozen. So in other words, when you go to the sperm donor clinic and your ass ejaculate into a cup and they freeze that shit, it could last for decades. That's the only way sperm could survive past five days. When sperm is in a human body, a woman, it lasts up to five days and then it dies. And if you don't know, sperm can live outside of the body, I believe for a matter of hours. I don't, I don't, I've heard up to 24 hours. I don't know if it's that long, but I know sperm can live outside of the body for, for a little while. You know what I'm saying? But if it's actually in a woman's reproductive tract, it can live, live up to five days, right? So it says it goes to her brain. All right, let's keep going. Damn, Good. Like the that. Bible, a woman was only supposed to be with one man her whole entire life because they... Okay. What did I say earlier? Right? I talked about propaganda or half-truths. So now he's trying to use the Bible. Hey, this is what he's doing. Okay, if you haven't figured out what he's doing, he's using the Bible. He's using biology. Right? What he's talking about, he's talking about the immune system. He's using the Bible. Hold on real quick. Okay. When you talk about the immune system, he's using biology and he's using his own beliefs. So he's taking the Bible, biology, and his own personal beliefs and he's mashing that shit up together and what he's trying to do is to, what he's trying to do is basically articulate his argument in such a way that is believable. This is why he's using half truths, right? He's using half truths, so that way it makes his argument appear to have some teeth to it, right? It's all bullshit, but we're gonna get into that. They knew that concept, or she was supposed to remain a virgin until she got wedded. And your sperm, right, when you ejaculate in a woman, you have something that literally suppresses her immune system. Now, sperm can impact a woman's immune system where it can throw her pH balance off, right? So a lot of that has to do with what you what you eat as the man, right? What you, what you eat, your diet. So in other words, an example would be if you consume a lot of alcohol, right? And you have a lot of alcohol in your system, right? And then you ejaculate in that woman, right? That can impact her immune system, right? This is why women get, um, uh, I can't think of the word, um, Ah, it's, it's an infection. I, I can't think it. Women, y'all know what I'm talking about, but it's, a, it's an infection that women get um, sometimes. Uh, urinary tract infection. I, be, I believe that's what it is. And a lot of that has to do with, with the sperm, right? But again, a lot of that has to do with your diet as a man. So again, he's using half-truths, which is propaganda. And then she has something called spermicide that's naturally produced by her vagina to keep Spermicide is not naturally produced by a woman's vagina. Now, 
Here's where he contradicts himself. Kill all the hundred trillions of sperms, but one can make it, and the baby can be conceived. What this? So if she had, <laughs> if she naturally produced spermicide, and it killed off all the other sperm, so the sperm that's meant to make it to her her ovaries that she can produce, then how did the other shit make it to her brain? That's what he contradicted himself. And, and people are so stupid, they can't even see. As soon as I heard it, I, I knew he immediately kind of contradicted himself. I ain't even have to look this shit up. But I looked it up because I wanted to show y'all that when you look shit up and you're actually intelligent enough to say, that shit don't make no sense to me, and you look it up, you can, conduct, you can contradict all this bullshit that guys were talking about on the internet. And all it really is, look, let me break something down to y'all. Guys who don't know nothing, they have been trying to figure out why women do the things that they do sexually. Why women have the amount of sex that they have. Why women have as many sex partners as they have. They've been trying to figure that out. Because if you believe, as a man, if you believe that women are only supposed to be with one man at a time, and they're only supposed to uh, um, be in a relationship sexually with one man, and that monogamy is supposed to be natural for women, then the promiscuity of women is going to throw you off. You're going to believe that something is fundamentally wrong and flawed with women who engage in a lot of casual sex. So a lot of these guys who talk that shit, they're, they're trying to explain either logically or biologically what happens to women who engage in a lot of prom promiscuity. And, and what it is, is they're trying to explain why they have trouble with women. I need guys to understand where this really comes from. And it comes from insecurity, sexual insecurity. They're trying to explain, oh, oh this, is, this must be why I'm with a woman where my dick is not enough for her. This must be why I'm with a woman who is still fucking her baby daddy. Oh, this must be why I'm with a woman that my, that my penis ain't big enough for her because she had all these other penises that she's comparing me to because all these guys ejaculated in her. So there's nothing wrong with me. Oh, no, it's her. And this is what it really is. That whole Parabani narrative, it's the same thing. It's not me, it's her, right? So it takes the onus off the guy and it puts on puts us on the actions or the behaviors of the woman because guys don't want to take accountability for the fact that they suck. Guys don't want to take accountability for the fact that they are inept and that they just ain't got no game. They, they can't fuck. Women don't like them. And the women that do fuck with them are only using them. You know what I'm saying? Or women settle for them, which is why guys get into relationships and then the relationship ends up becoming sexless. So guys try to figure out why is it that way? Oh, it's the woman. No, it's you. And it's the fact that you don't know how to actually influence a woman to treat you in such a way that's favorable to you. Right? So let's go. This does when you ejaculate her. You oh, Hold on real quick. Okay, let, let, me, let me tackle the spermicide thing. <laughs> <laughs> what is the most natural spermicide? There are multiple sources suggesting that lemon juice. So if if spermicide was naturally produced in a woman, why the fuck are they talking about lemon juice? Okay. Has also been used as a natural spermicide through the ages. Wait a minute. If women's body naturally produced spermicide, why the fuck do they need lemon juice? Right? There have been recorded uses of lemon juice. Uses, uses of lemon juice used by women in the Mediterranean for more than 300 years. Sponges or rags would be soaked in fresh lemon juice before inserting them into the vagina. Wait a minute. If a woman's body naturally produced this shit, why are they putting lemon-soaked rags in their twats? That don't even make no sense. Spermicide is a contraceptive substance that destroys sperm. Again, he's using half-truths. So he's right that spermicide destroys sperm, but he lied. He literally lied and said that women naturally produced it. No, they don't. Okay. I can read it right there. I, I ain't got to go no further. I think my point has been proven. All right. So let's move on. We can our immune system. It's something called the blood and brain barrier. Your sperm literally passes it and attaches to receptors. Wait, 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 wait. He said blood brain barrier. Your sperm literally passes that and attaches to receptacles. You see how he's trying to make it seem like he know what he's talking about, right? Half-truths. Religion, 
<laughs> biology, right? Right? Come on, man. So y'all want to know what blood-brain barrier is? I'm glad you asked. And let me tell you that sperm through a vagina can never make it to the brain. Even if a woman swallows your kids, it will not make it to her brain. Why? Because sperm is mostly water-based. Right? Oh, I'm going to break all this shit down. So let's go. So what is the brain up? Uh, your blood brain barrier is a tightly locked layer of cells that defend your brain from harmful, harmful substances, germs, and other things that could cause damage. It's a key part of maintaining your brain health. Right. So do y'all want to know? Do y'all want to know the things that can actually pass through your blood to brain barrier? Do y'all want to know those things? Okay. Sperm is not one of them. There you go right there. Here's the list. Right here. These are all man-made things. Man-made things. Again, what is it? Okay. It defends your brain from harmful substances. All those things could potentially be harmful substances to your brain. These are the things that can pass through your blood-brain barrier. All that right there. I don't see sperm on that motherfucking list. And y'all are free to look it up all you want. <laughs> Let's go. Man. It's on our brain. That's why they be so addicted to males. Literally, women scientifically get dick with though. Sci he said women scientifically get dick with. Really now. Really now. Let's listen to what he said. Scientifically. Because your sperm literally bonds with her brain. So he says women get dick whipped. Because a man's sperm bonds to her brain. So, so, so wait a minute. Wait a minute. If this were true, can you explain all those guys in sexless marriages that have children with those women, that have been skeeting in those women for years, and those women are literally rationing out the sex to them dudes? In some cases, them dudes is going weeks, months, in some cases, years without fucking... Wait a minute. If a woman is dick whipped, you telling me a woman who's dick whipped by you can go weeks, months, and years without fucking you? Come on, man. That don't even make no sense. No, gentlemen. Women get dick whipped because dick is good to them. Matter of fact, fuck, fuck good. Dick is great. Women get dick whipped because dudes is hitting the bottom. Women get dick whipped because dudes is fucking the dog shit out of them. Fucking them good. And women can't get enough of that good dick. That's how women get dick whipped. It ain't got nothing to do with your sperm. And see, let's go back. Yeah, let's go back. Oh, just, hold on. You ejaculate in a woman, bro. Your sperm go to her brain and stay there for the rest of her life. Good. Yeah, damn. Good. That's I why like the Bible, that. a woman was only supposed to be with one man her whole entire life because they knew that concept. Or she was supposed to remain a virgin until she got wedded. In your right, sperm, when you ejaculate you. in a woman, you have something that literally suppresses her immune system. And then she has something called spermicide that's naturally you. produced by her vagina. Wait a minute. What, okay, gentlemen, where can you find spermicide at? In your drugstores and supermarkets. <laughs> that, that's, that, that's where you can find them at, gentlemen. Okay, they're not in a woman's body naturally, right? You got to go to the store to get them shits. And if you don't want to go to the store... You know what I'm saying? A buy spermicide, then you can buy some fucking lemons, nigga. Squeeze the juice on the rag, put it in the chick's vagina, and there you have it, my nigga. <laughs> to kill all the hundred trillions of sperms for one can make it and the baby can be conceived. What this does when you ejaculate her and you weaken her immune system is something called the blood and brain barrier. Your sperm literally passes it and attaches to receptors on her brain. That's why they be so addicted to males. Literally, women scientifically get dick with them. Y'all see that right there? He literally just posted dick whip. Let's read it together, shall we? When a man gives it so good to a woman that she wants, craves, and would do anything to have that dick again and again. I don't see anything about a woman being skeeted in. I have worn condoms with chicks and never even ejaculated in a condom and had women fiending for this motherfucking pipe again and again 
and again. And it just it 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 boggles my mind that no one called him out. This is how I know none of them dudes are hitting the bottom with a condom on. Because they would have said, no, nah, bro, yo, I didn't have plenty of chicks fiending for this shit. And I ain't never took the condom off, much less eat it in a chick. Come on, man. Let me let me let me end this shit. <laughs> he said women scientifically get dick whipped. Stop the cap. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, if you got trash dick, you ain't whipping no chick with that motherfucker. And it don't even matter the size. The sizes are really, really irrelevant. It don't matter what the size of your shit is. Because women will tell you they had dudes that had bigger than average joints. And, and, and some of the shit was way bigger than average, but the dudes didn't know what they was doing. They never made the woman climax. And those women were not beating down that guy's door to get more dick. They was like, it's a damn shame he got all of that and don't know what to do with it. Gentlemen, if you get anything from this joint, I want you to get this. Most of men's insecurities revolve around sex, directly or indirectly. Here's the bottom line. Guys, they want to feel like they can be with a woman. They can be in a committed relationship where that woman is only having sex with them and them only. And they want to feel like that man, they want to feel like that man, him, that, him being that man, they want to feel like that no other woman fantasizes, thinks about, dreams about any man but him. Let, let, let me show you, let me show you what I mean. People actually think hooking up with anyone you want is a flex. While in reality, a flex is having someone no one else can have. And that's what it is. Guys want to feel like when I get with a woman, she doesn't fiend for nobody else's dick but mine. If she's out and about, no other guy can take my woman from me. Okay, no other guy can seduce my woman. This is why a woman's body count matters to guys. This is why. But but I'm going to tell you how those guys, deep down inside, they know that don't even matter. How do you know that no matter how modestly a woman dresses, matters? Because guys will tell you, don't get with a chick who has a baby daddy because they still fucking. That's that insecurity. Don't get with a chick who still do girls night out with her homegirls. Because if she was happy with you and your dick, she wouldn't be out there with her homegirls. She out there with her single girls. You shouldn't be with a chick who still do girls night out. Oh, oh, don't get with a chick who take girl trips. Because you know on them girl trips, they be fucking in them foreign countries. Oh, oh, don't get with no chick who posts uh, thirst traps on the internet. Because God's going to try to get at her. She want all that attention from all these other men. So she must want other dick then. So guys already know that even their own beliefs is bullshit. Or they might say, hey, man, ain't nothing wrong with checking your girl's phone. You're supposed to do that. It's, it's normal for people to check each other's phones. No, it's not. It's not normal. It's literally an invasion of privacy. Checking someone's phone um, is akin to checking someone's mail or reading someone's mail or reading through someone's journal or someone's diary. Because if you're going to look at text messages to try and see if there's something there, you literally have to read personal text messages between her friends, her family members, even her co-workers. You have to read through all of that shit to get to the dirt that you're looking for. So you're literally reading through personal shit. That shit is not normal. And I'm going to tell you, any woman that know me, you know, I'll leave your ass. I'll, I'll stop fucking with you on the spot. Going through my phone is a fireball offense. Bitch is over. I don't play. It's my phone. And then people will try and shame you. Well, if you're in a relationship. You ain't got nothing to hide. Yo, I don't give a fuck. I've literally had people tell me, oh, you're, you're, you're just a cheater. Someone's going to find something in your phone. That's why you got a problem. No, you're just an insecure motherfucker who, in order for you to feel safe in a relationship, you, have, you need your insecurities coddled. People have to always prove to you that they're not cheating. People have to always prove to you that you're the only one. And, and one of the ways they can do that is let you go through their shit. One of the ways they can do that is sharing their location with you so you can always know where they're at. 
You're just an insecure motherfucker. And that's the root of all of this shit is that you have a bunch of insecure males on the internet and they're spewing all of this nonsense. And what it is, is they're insecure. So what they do, instead of just saying what it is, yo, I'm an insecure dude, man. Like, bro, I, I just, I, I don't think I'm enough. I don't think my dick is enough. Uh, I know for a fact that the woman, any woman I'm dealing with, she probably had a guy who had a bigger joint than my shit. She probably had a guy that fucked her better than me. And I'm worried about that shit. Okay, this is why I want a chick with a low body count. This is why, and if I can find a chick who's a virgin, that's even better because there's literally no penis but mine that she can compare to. And that's that's a lie because I'm going to tell you right now, just because a woman hasn't had sex vaginally don't mean she ain't sucking dick. Just because a woman hasn't had sex vaginally doesn't mean she ain't having sex anally. I've known plenty of chicks who there was nobody who was raising their hand and saying, I tap that. There was a lot of girls who, for all intents and purposes, they were virgins. But they were doing everything else sexually except having vaginal intercourse. I'm telling you, and this is a fact, right? And just because a woman hasn't had sex yet, that doesn't mean that she hasn't watched porn. Let me tell y'all something. I remember when I was living in England, I was 13 or 14 at the time. And we would skip school. And it would be a room full of dudes and a room full of chicks. And we would be watching porn. And 90 something percent, 95 percent of the people in that room hadn't had sex yet. But everybody watching porn, though. So women are still seeing penises. They're still seeing other women get dick down. They're still saying to themselves, hey, I don't know when I'm going to have sex for the first time. But I want to feel like she feel it. I want a dude to pull out something that look like that. Come on, man. Not only that, but women who are virgins, they got friends that tell them all about their sexual uh, romps and their sex capades. So women know all about sex. Okay, let me just say this about virgins. A lot of women who are virgins when they're younger, they're not virgins because they have some religious belief. I mean, some of them are, but a lot of them, that's not why they're virgins. A lot of women who are virgins, they're virgins because they're scared to death of pregnancy and STDs. And that's why they haven't had sex yet vaginally. But they'll do everything else. But because they're scared to death of STDs and pregnancy, they won't have sex vaginally for a while. Don't get it twisted. People run around thinking these chicks is virtuous. No the fuck they ain't. You just want a, a virtuous woman so bad that any woman who comes along and gives off any type of indication that she might be a virtuous good girl, you're going to fall in love with that chick. You're going to swoop her up. You're going to cuff her quick. Okay, and I'm going to end it with this. Um, About a year or so ago, maybe two years ago, there was a guy that used to watch my live streams religiously. Okay, and this is back when I had um, uh, CJ and Dave on my manhood is a skill set show before Miles J. Roman and, and Mr. Jester. When I had Steve, I keep, I'm going to keep wanting to say Steve, CJ and Dave, when I had them on, this guy actually met a woman who said she was a virgin and that she was waiting until marriage. Within six months of her meeting him, he proposed to her because she was a virgin. And he admitted on a phone call that he cheated on her, right? So he was willing to perpetrate a fraud, right? He was willing to pretend to wait, but because he's a man who's had sex before, he was still fucking unbeknownst to her, so he was cheating on his chick. But within six months of meeting her, he proposed marriage. Why? Because she was a virgin. And I remember asking him, if she wasn't a virgin, would you have proposed marriage? He was like, hell no. This is how desperate guys are to find virgins is that they would literally move up their timeline, get into relationships and marriages. So as long as they can get a chick with little to no sexual experience or none at all, this is how fucked up guys are out here. This is how insecure guys are. This is how much they pedestalize sex when it comes to a woman having a low body count or a woman who tells them that she's a virgin. Guys are out here believing anything that women say, man. I'm out.